Wait, hold on. I have to wash my hands. Please let me just wash my hands. I always feel crazy after the show. After being out there. And then I don't wash my hands. And then I want to touch my face. And I want to start wiping off my makeup. I am on my way to um, a magazine. Uh, I don't know. A photo shoot. But I'm glad it's Friday. I have the whole weekend. And I'm doing absolutely nothing. I was thinking of going to Costco. These are good, aren't they? These are good, right? Yeah. They're long, aren't they? Flats aren't really for girls with big feet, but I don't care. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello? Mrs. Hunter speaking. Uh -oh. Hi, Lisa. Can I call you back in, a, um, in about a half hour? Thank you, Lisa. Bye-bye. Anybody who calls me Mrs. Hunter gets my attention. I'm a sucker for that. We had this intern here. He called me Mrs. Hunter all the time. He was the only intern. And now mind you, I'm in Wendy Williams mode when I'm here. So you're really just supposed to call me Wendy. You know, even the interns. I, I mean... It'd be nice if the interns, because they're kids and they're under 25, and to me, if a, if a kid is under 25, then I would prefer an MRS in front of my name, or at least Miss Wendy, you know? And some of the kids here call me Miss Wendy, but this one intern, and I forgot his name, but it was last year, because we were in the old building, and he used to call me Mrs. Hunter all the time. And I just, I mean, he was just so damn polite with it. This, I just wanted to just, oh, I, I wanted to sing his praises. I can't even remember the kid's name, but I remember what he looked like, and he showed up in the audience last week. And, he, and then I waved to him, and he mouthed, hello, Mrs. Hunter. Yeah. Now, I don't know how he was... Uh, you know, in terms of, you know, as an intern, we don't have any jobs available here or anything like that, but I'll always remember the kid, even though I forget his name, as long as he doesn't change his looks <laughs> or part his hair on the other side. Mrs. Hunter, I love that. I like Melissa Etheridge, you know what I mean? That's what makes this, I guess, uh, you know, such a, such a special type of show. I mean, yesterday it was 2 chains. today Melissa Etheridge, Melissa Etheridge... She's a real deal, you know? She, uh, and I appreciate that about her. She came to the show. She laid it down and chatted with us. I like her. I like her. It's got to be the most freeing thing ever to come out of the closet and be exactly who you are. For more on that story, let's ask Antoine. Antoine! 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 Why are you always calling for Antoine? Antoine ain't the only one that works here. Well, you're just in time also. Isn't it the most freeing thing to be out of the closet with your sexuality? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, are you sorry you walked in? But you know, I'm talking about Melissa Etheridge. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's, I mean, when you don't have to hide and... When you can uh, hold hands and kiss at the I Olive still Garden. have a problem with that, though. Holding Public hands? Public affection, yeah. But, you know, I'm scared a rock gonna get thrown. You know how I am. <laughs> you know how y'all are. I don't throw rocks. No, I embrace. Not y'all. I'm talking about y'all. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> ah. Next, Stephanie, what is this? Bird Boutique. Well, I was just saying, isn't it the most freeing thing to be out of the closet with your sexuality? Yes, but I don't care about nothing. I just need you to try on your Halloween wig. I'm going home, Antoine. The Halloween so wig better be right. He, he ain't free with his. He's Gotta not. Gotta change the subject. Right. Being free. Free. <laughs> free. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs>
Look, I made this mask, uh, you boys and you guys, for um, an HIV AIDS charity Aww. for auction. I'll tell you exactly who I made it for. I hot glued um, all the rhinestones together uh, this morning. That's kind of sexy. Uh, I, well, you know what? These are the rest of my rhinestones from Dancing with the Stars. Do you remember I showed you my flip-flops? So I bought the rhinestones in it and my hot glue gun from Candy Spelling, and I got busy. I put a couple... Oh, this is still a little bit wet right here. It is for... Um, it's in support of um, ASC NYC, and um, it's for charity. So, you know, I do what I can. I'm only one woman. Do you have big plans for the weekend? I was telling you, I was thinking of going to um, Costco because uh, Halloween's good. I mean, Thanksgiving's going to be here before we know it. I'm not even thinking about Halloween next week because I told you I'm not opening the door. Um, they're expecting Hurricane, Hurricane Sandy, which is right now um, taking over Jamaica. Um, shout out to all of our friends in that part of the Caribbean. Um, a couple of you are have friended me on Facebook and you've let me know that uh, you're watching the after show I saw this yesterday while Sandy is thumping at your front door um, and so now is probably the time to take in the cushions from the outdoor furniture we started that project but just it hasn't gotten done I can't wait for Halloween to be over and done with honestly I love the costume that I have but I hate the fussing the trying on the pinning the the extra crunches and all that. Besides, the sooner Halloween is over, the sooner I can make my big announcement to you. You know the announcement that I was telling you I had to call my mom and dad? And then my dad got real concerned and called my husband. And then I, as a mom, was concerned. So I had a special mother-daughter, mother-son talk with little Kev, only for little Kev to be so cool with it. It was ridiculous. He's like, why am I blessed with the cool kid? I mean, I, I mean that funnily. Funnily, is that a word? Um, I had a serious talk with him about something that I thought, you know, he might have a little problem with, but I was going to do anyway, because I'm the boss around here, not you. Get a job. Right? And he was just like, mom, that's cool. You're beautiful. Wow. So the faster Halloween is over, the faster I can let the cat out of the bag. In the meantime, in between time, it's Halle Berry on Monday. That's going to be a lot of fun. You know, I went out to L.A. and I interviewed with her. And she and I made a real connection that I do believe will be a lasting relationship. Nice girl. And you're nice people as well. Sometimes shady, but shady is good. I love you for watching today. I'll see you next time. <laughs> you. Hi. I am signing books. Still in my show wig and makeup. And sweatsuit, though. I very rarely wear sweats. Like sweat sweats. Like, I have sweatpants on today, not leggings. Because it's pouring out. When I woke up this morning at 4... 30, just, uh, that's all I heard was the rain just everywhere. Still like that now. It's a disgusting day here in New York. The perfect day for sweats. This is the day that will probably be the longest of the whole week for me. We give away these autographed um, Wendy books for Ask Wendy. So you ask a question, you get a book. Nice. Book signing was good yesterday. There were Quite a few people. Quite a few people. Um, I saw some of your comments, and I understand what you mean regarding um, uh, book signings. Why do I do book signings? Nobody goes to bookstores anymore. And that's a very sad thing. Bookstores are closing all around. There's no viable money in bookstores, just like record stores have closed. You know, uh, The same thing has happened to the book community. But there are some of us who, um, and I know that many people order from bnn.com, amazon.com, but there's some of us who oh, like to walk in the bookstore and get the books. You know, when I started getting books um, um, online, because sometimes they're a lot less expensive, 
is uh, when Kevin started to have to do projects in school. So many years ago, as soon as he was able to start reading, and I'm going to the, running to Barnes and Noble to buy the book, and um, in an actuality, I could, you know order it online because they outgrow those books so much. But for me, as an adult, because I know that I'm not outgrowing books, I just collect them. I like to go into bookstores, and I have a section in my book collection with autographed books, with the autographed Cindy Lauper book, with the autographed Paul Schaefer book, with an autographed Oprah book, with an autographed Barack Obama book. Uh, I think his was Letters to My Father. It was his first book when he was Senator Obama, and he came to interview with me on my radio show. So I have some really great collections um, of autographed books, and if you really, you know, like a particular author or personality or whatever, um, there are many people who still go out to the book signings, and I don't know how other people do their book signings, but I know for me, I give a little something extra because I know that um, the book industry um, is suffering um, under a crippling economy. So when you come to a Wendy book signing, what you get is, like last night's book signing, I was at the Barnes and Nobles in Tribeca for about two hours. And I spent approximately a half hour doing question and answers. And you're close to me. And there were rows and rows of people and then other people who were you know, standing around and listening. I, I had book chat. It happened to have been a very large Barnes and Nobles where before I went in, I was stopped outside by TMZ and asked uh, whose team am I on, Lindsay Lowen or Amanda's? Well, I had to choose one, so I said Amanda Bynes. I love Lindsay Lowen, but Lindsay Lowen doesn't want to help herself. We spent a lot of time talking about her. Amanda Bynes, I might be the only person who thinks, thinks that she's not crazy and out of her mind. Part of me feels that she's just this, you know, this young kid who's very wealthy and, you know, having fun with her money. I could be wrong, but, you know. Anyway, um, so then I went inside. And I talked for like a half hour. And I spent a few moments talking about why I wrote the book. And I stood up. I wore leather jeans and, you know, just regular Wendy. Um, I wore leather jeans and seven-inch heels uh, and a top. And I stood. I didn't hide behind a podium or anything. And I talked about why I wrote the book and how the book is designed. And then we opened up the mic for Ask Wendy. And at first, everybody was nervous because, you know, you're asking me a question in front of a bunch of strangers, but, you know, I'm ready to deal with your toughest questions. And I told everybody, I promise you, I'm not going to laugh. And I'm not going to judge you for whatever question you ask me. I know I seem like a giggler and a judger, but I'm not a giggler and a judger in my real life. I take my Ask Wendy very, very seriously. And so it only takes one person to open the can of worms. But, of course, it's up to me as the author to set the tone. And before you knew it, I had like 15 great questions, some of them very personal. But we were all, for just one moment, trapped on an island as the book community. And then after we did Ask Wendy, then everybody, you know, they took row by row and people came up and I signed their book. And we were close, like I'm here and and you're right here, and I'm signing and I'm talking, and then you dip and lean, that's when you know you bend your knees, dip, lean, because I'm sitting now and signing, and we take a picture together. And you know, one of the employees of Barnes & Nobles was in charge of, you know, take your camera and take a picture, take your camera and take a picture. There was a woman who came up to me and she started crying profusely. Um, she said, you know, my mom's dying of cancer and you're the only thing that makes her happy and makes her forget her pain. and, and and lady started crying. She wasn't, you know, so young. She was like my age. But she was crying. And anyway, uh, people come up with some really incredible stories. Um, I met a young man in line who started listening to me on the radio when he was 11 years old. Uh, he's now 32. I was like, so I raised you. And he said, yes, Miss Wendy, you raised me. Um, an intern of mine from radio, Jason, who was, you know, just a goofy kid back then. He is now a banker. He came. There were a couple of employees um, from for a former radio station that I worked at in New York that came to support. Um, but all kinds of people, young, old, all nationalities and whatnot. So 
I understand what you're saying about book signings being, you know, stupid, but for a small segment of us, we like the book and we appreciate an autograph and it's probably one of the only places that you can catch a fan out of me. Um, uh, okay, so I have to get ready to go because I'm about to do something for um, OK Magazine and we're going to do a Google Hangout, which is why I sell my makeup on, and then the E! News uh, cameras will be in here in a little while. But I loved Sierra today, and you called me out on telling Sierra what's going on with the music. I saw that yesterday on the after show, but I talked to her about it today. She understands there was a little hiccup in the music. I mean, you know, she was distracted by other things. I think that this album would be pretty good. I like the first single. I love talking to Teresa Giudici. And as far as me hailing a cab, no, I hailed my own cab. I take car service all the time. The day that I went uptown, it was because it was a gorgeous day here in New York, and I just wanted to walk around with a pair of sunglasses and be free. And I had a great time. Um, I'll be at Bookmark in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn tonight beginning at 7.30, signing copies of my Ask Wendy book. So if you're in Brooklyn tonight, check me out. I love you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. Every single person in the audience loved these shoes. Now, I'm not sure whether I lost the card that went with them. They say Tyler Bailey. Oh, the, no. This is original Tyler Bailey. This is written in silver sharper in gold sharpie. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler, I'm wearing your gift. But you never thought you'd see them on the show, did you? I thought that they were perfect for Fourth of July. And uh, anytime I want to channel my one, my inner Wonder Woman, the shoes that I started out the show with, though, Stewie. are classic Stewies. Stewart Weitzman's. Everything doesn't have to have a giant heel. This is like what three and a half inches. Comfortable. Memsor, I told you, is on this whole red, white, and blue kick. <laughs> it was an idea. An idea which started way before we knew we had a post save. I don't know why I can't wear the Catherine Mullandrino dress. Again? Did we start? Oh, we need again. I only wore it once. You want to wear it when? We've already taped. We should have worn it today. The dress was expensive. When am I going to wear it again? Are you going to have a barbecue this weekend? Wear it this weekend. I'll be in a mumu. It'll be my one day. Fourth of July is my only day off for days. Like no Broadway, no show. You wear it again. Don't worry. On the show? Yeah, it's too expensive not to wear again. This is what I was selling? It was like $1,000? Not quite. Okay. But we'll remix it. We'll cut the sleeve off. We'll make it a fun. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Do you remember how tight the boobs were? I, how, if, how could I forget? If you reflect back, you'll see I have a tank top on underneath it. Because while I think it was a size 10, mm -hmm. right? Wait, come in here. Oh. Okay. It was a size 10, but, you know, it didn't close around my mammoth boobs. So which, Whit which Whitney loved. I saw her. She got real quick. Uh, How's she doing? How's she doing? <laughs> but I think what we should do, we should cut off the whole top and make it a skirt. Or get creative. But no, you're smaller than you were then. So Not my right boobs. We'll see. Yeah. Not my boobs. <laughs> boobs are still yeah. the same. No, so we'll do that. We'll do a remix. And we'll wear it next 4th of July? How are we taking the picture? No. Are we going to wear it next 4th of July? No, we'll wear it before then. What's the occasion? Don't you worry. Election day. No, the All election's right. not an ele another election for another three years. Four Can we years. just take this picture, please? Will we be on TV in four years? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, we will. 14, 15, 16, 17. 17, yes! The question is, will I... Oh, sorry. Will you still be here? <laughs> I would. Well, I'm, what... I'm dying yes, you support. will. I'll be here forever and ever. And not only that, the, the bigger question is, mm -hmm. will I still be able to fit it? Because I definitely plan At the rate on. you're going, yes. Just don't, don't lose any more weight, please. Yeah, no more. And that, that comes from me, yeah. No, that comes from a white man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who that? Tristan. A lot of white boys. Tristan, you like them skinny. Like, you don't like a big butt funky, you know. No, I like I like a butt. John Anderson. Look, look. John, should I lose more weight? No. Not at all. You <laughs> And everything fits perfect right now. This dress is like three years old. That's the great thing about Lycra, though. You can stretch up or stretch down. Can we take the bloody picture? <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn picture. <laughs> Thank you. You're okay. welcome. This way, this way, this way. Well, all I needed to hear were those words of encouragement. Now, guess what I'm going to have for lunch? <laughs> A sandwich. <laughs> I was thinking of having the sandwich only yesterday. It didn't have the same twang. So I'm back to my burrito bowl. Everything in a burrito. 
in a regular plastic container. But today, on account of there's a unanimous vote, don't lose any more weight, I'm gonna get it in that crunchy fried bowl that's like 500 calories. I'm gonna eat the salad and break off the bowl. Taco bandito. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna have. A taco bandito. Somebody was asking me uh, where I get my sandwiches. If you're in New York, Toasties. Yeah, Toasties is around the city. It's, there's one over near the Ambassador Theater. There's one here in Chelsea. Mmm, they've got good sandwiches. I've got another Broadway show tonight at 8 o'clock. I don't know how I'm doing it, honestly. I got a vitamin B12 shot, though, I have to say. Directly into my, um... But I think that's a placebo too, though. I don't know that that works. Hi, Vita. Hi. I've been running around all day. I haven't said hello. Um, look, if you don't mind. If you don't mind, we're going to make this a very, very quick after show. I like your sneakers. Thank you. First time ever you ever like anything of mine. Get out of here. Don't say that, Antoine. No, no. like that. No. You gotta give us something to look at. <laughs> really? Okay. Really? I'm sorry, I'm about to be fat. I started to get them last time. I started to get them. Short on words, long on hunger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you understand. I'll give you, a, I'll give you, I'll give you a little something more uh, for tomorrow's after show. Okay. I love you for watching. Bye. <laughs> eee, you are just in time for the first lash off and the second lash off. I've stopped wearing lashes on Broadway. I got my makeup pared down to just the basics. It's not like it used to be when Liza Minnelli and all them wore all that makeup. It's not like that anymore. They don't wear all that makeup anymore, the Broadway girls. The guys don't wear any makeup at all in my show. And everybody scampers out of there, like literally 30 seconds after we say goodbye. Everybody's gone. No lie. It's not like what you would think, where we're all sitting in our mirrors, in our individual dressing rooms, taking off our makeup like Pepe La Beja in Paris is Burning. It's not like that at all. And prior to the show, I told you, I got it down because I've done 13 shows now. Um, and it's about as good as it's going to get. You know, I've started adding my Wendy-isms into stuff and things. Um, I get there like 45 minutes before showtime. Isn't that crazy? Lick, lick, lickety split. My makeup is done. Put my wig on my head. Everybody's running around. It's like, it's like a dorm. It's like a dormitory. It really, it is the closest thing to college that I've been to in years. Everybody's running up and down. There's no elevators, you know, that theaters are old. Everybody's running up and down the steps. Girls scantily clad, like in the Victoria's Secret catalog with all that pink stuff. You know, the scantily clad girls. No, they're running around in their dancing dresses. I'm sitting in my room in my bra cami and wig cap. And you hear people working their voices but telling jokes. Oh, it's just fun. It's like a dorm. It's like a dorm. So with 13 shows down, I really do feel like I have a new family over there. My Broadway family. You know what I do in my dressing room when I get there? First thing I do is spray Lysol. <laughs> well, only because the theaters are old. And I got this thing about when things look a visual way, then all of a sudden I feel sick. 
You have to understand um, that there's so much history in the theaters, but also there's got to be so much mold painted over and lead paint poisoning and everything. So I sp And there's not a lot of ventilation. There's not a lot of ventilation. All my castmates will tell you the same thing. I don't know what they do in their dressing rooms. They probably do the same thing. There's no windows to open or windows to look out or anything like that. Um, so I spray Lysol and then I take out my portable DVD player and I pop in AbFab, Patsy and Adina. They get me in the mood. They get me in the mood. I watch that. I have box set of Sex in the City, which there's no TVs um, anywhere around, but I need TV to get me inspired. So I, I like to watch um, stuff. I have box set of What's Happening. I haven't started watching that because I'm still on AbFab. Box set of Big Bobby Brown. Uh, yeah. Oh, and a lot of viewing that um, the show gives me to watch, you know, like the housewives and everything. Everything that I'm missing because I'm busy um, being Greta Garbo. <laughs> I'm having a, a really fun summer. I'm actually about to work on a project now. In about a half hour, some project people are going to be here. And I'm working on a project. that I need a scrubbed face for. That's about as scrubbed as they're gonna get it. <laughs> or you could put it back here and make it a longer one. <laughs> oh, so stupid. Oh my gosh! Look what one of my after showers sent me. This is from Frida Dunbar. Isn't this cute? Holds my cell phone. Thanks, Frida. I don't really have a lot to say. Two of my um, high school mates were in the audience today. It's always fun to see people from high school. Especially when you weren't popular and your grades weren't the best. And you were big and tall and never went to the prom. And never had a boyfriend. And we're told by your guidance counselor that a four-year college wouldn't be the best for you, that maybe you need to go to a community college. Yeah, it's always fun to see people from the past. No, but you know who was here? Chi Chi Harvey, who not only were we in high school, in grade school together, we were also on swim team together, and she was always nice to me. And um, also Lori Kruger. I forget their marital names. Both girls are married. They have kids. And um, they were in the audience today. Lori um, was loosely part of my circle, actually. It was really nice to see Lori. And she also um, lived down the street, about 15 houses down, on the right. That's nice. I've been doing so much, um, not shopping, like spending a lot of money recently, but I've just been in the stores a lot recently. You know, um, not expensive stores, just regular stores. You know, my kid is getting, he's actually in uh, day camp basketball camp now, but he's getting ready to go to sleepaway basketball camp. So, you know, along with doing the show and working on projects and doing the Broadway and everything, I'm starting to gather his stuff up. Sunscreen, he, they need like 12 pair of socks and, you know, all this other kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. He gets on the plane, he's going to go to basketball camp. Um, but I've also been looking at stuff, I don't know, you know, Fourth of July to a lot of people means the start of summer. To me, Fourth of July means, oh my gosh, summer's almost over. Tristan's nodding. I'm not the only one who feels like that. It's frightening. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> I was at H&M, the best H&M as far as I'm concerned, the one right across from St. Patrick's Cathedral on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. It's the best one. I was in H&M for like five hours. All right, really two hours between matinees. That's what I do sometimes. Sometimes, like, when we have a Sunday matinee, I've been eating too much food. I've been going to restaurants and holding court for, like, two hours. And I've only been on Broadway for a matter of days, but I could always already see how, okay, Restaurant Row in the theater district is really, really a dangerous place to be. I need to do something better with my time. So when we have um, our breaks in between, or if I get to the theater and it's a little bit early, I try to bide my time at like one day sales and things like that. That's why I'm spending so much time in the stores. It's better than eating. So I was in H&M and 
I'm seeing fall clothes already, everybody. There's so much burgundy stuff. Apparently burgundy, ox blood, maroon, whatever you want to call it, is going to be big for fall again. But fall clothes are already out. And I've sworn off buying anything else for summer. Did you like my jumpsuit today? Oh my gosh. The girls in the audience were commenting so much. First of all, I love jumpsuits because everybody can wear them. For me, because I have 40 inch legs, that was two jumpsuits in one. About the last 10 inches of the legs, I had to buy two of the same jump. It becomes expensive when you're tall. I guess when you're really short too because everything has to be altered. But at least when you're short, you just lob off of something that you already have. When you're tall, like for me, my invention, my personal invention is that I buy two pairs of jeans, the same jeans, to so the wash match, or in this case, two of those jumpsuits. The jumpsuit was like $125. Look on the wardrobe section of um, my website. A lot of you all ask, I can't believe you even ask this, why do I lean against my name, that purple door, and take a picture every day? I do it for the wardrobe department. Duh. Just look over there and then you'll be able to see what I'm wearing, if you care. I forget the name of the jumpsuit. Um, but it was like $125. We got it on sale for $89. On sale, 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 sale. Finally, it was like $10. We bought two of them. The last 10 inches of my legs is chopped from the first jumpsuit. You see what I'm saying? And so we sewed it on. That's the only way I can even get a jumpsuit long enough for, for my long legs. But it was cheap. And it was just good. And you know what I did with the second half of it? I gave it to my mother. Because she's short. She could use 10 inches off. At some point this summer, she would delight in the idea of us going out with our jumpsuits on together. <laughs> she would. The mood will have to strike me to make her that happy. <laughs> but I'm corny enough, I'd do it. Anyway, so that's the jumpsuit. What are you plotting on for fall? Are you plotting on anything? I'm plotting. I need a really good trench coat. A really good trench coat. I've gotten the trench coats at Marshalls, and I've gotten the trench coats at the one day sales, and I've gotten the trench coats, trench coats, trench coats, and I've got a lot of them. But I don't want a lot. I want one really good trench coat with a zip out lining, one that lasts me forever. I don't want it to be animal print. I don't want it to be black. I want it to be classic camel beige, but not light camel. Camel, like maybe the color of my skin camel. Just a good trench coat. And I think that this is the time of the year. I'm trying to figure when, I have to actually call up um, stores and find out when the trench coats are on sale. I know one thing, mattresses. If you're in line for a mattress, this is the time of year to buy a mattress. Um, and by August, it'll be time to buy grills because they would figure, like late August, that's the time to buy a new grill. There's times of year to buy everything. February is the time of year to buy a car, car dealerships tell you. I need to know the time of the year to buy a refrigerator. Our refrigerator is good, but I'm not playing with it. I don't have one day off until, um, Broadway ends on August 11th. So every single day between now and August 11th at midnight, I'll be working. Whether it's the show here, or whether it's Broadway, or whether it's the show on Broadway. I'm not complaining. This is the life I ask. It's better than digging ditches. You know what I mean? Be grateful. I am. I'm not complaining. I'm just having a conversation. But I don't have any time off until August, 7th, oh, until August 12th. That's all. We're gonna die young. We're gonna die young. Let's make the most of it. We're gonna die young. At least if you're gonna work yourself to death, this is the best time of year to work it, right? While it's so nice out. It's not all depressing and cold. New York can get depressing and cold when it's cold out.
You like more, more choir scene? Me too. And the juicy, juicy hot topics? Me too. Tomorrow on the show, more hot topics and Bethany Frankel. I love you for watching today. I'll see you next time. I just saw Camilla there, and Camilla is the designer of my Halloween costume. So um, this has to be a really fast after show today. I've got a couple of meetings. I'm really hungry. I got dizzy during Ask Wendy. Did you see? Did you see that? I was standing on my heels and I, I went like that. I don't know what that was. I'm not sick. But I'm different. Yes, I'm different. Oh, okay, let me explain the dress. Okay, first of all, the dress comes in three layers. It's so funny. I just call this a petticoat. It's not a petticoat, but it's a lining. And then I have this and this. This is, um, while it's not for everybody, it is uh, by one of my favorite designers, Catherine Mullandrino. It's called, um, I don't know, the flag dress. It's iconic. It's in the Smithsonian. And she comes out with it maybe once every four years. And um, it's a legendary dress. And then the boots, I love those boots because they match the belt. Um, this is a BB belt. I'm not sure what kind, oh no, BCBG, Max Mara. Um, I'm not sure about the boots. I just remember we got them last season and I had never worn them because every time I look at them, I just used to lose my breath because there's, there's no zipper, which it's so stupid that people make boots with no zipper. So you've got to really point your toe. It took forever to get in those boots. And I've worn this necklace before and you asked me about it. This is, uh, my husband gave me this necklace uh, many, many years ago. <laughs> maybe 10 years ago. Um, yeah, it's diamond. And, you know, I don't have a lot of diamonds, but um, the ones that I do have are good and uh, gifts from him. Uh, and that's about it. I mean, we can pick up our conversation tomorrow because I'm, to, I'm starting to get anxiety. I want to see this Halloween costume. It's got to fit correctly. I'll walk you to the door. I love you for watching today. Tomorrow we have the round table and a whole lot more fun here on The Wendy Show. Bye. We ask on our show, just come and just let your freak flag fly, right, Joni? He was a good guest. He was real good. Janet said, "Ew." Janet said, "Ew." <laughs> and Nicole Murphy, nice girl. I'm glad she came here. It's a pretty girl. Don't try that at home. <laughs> Don't <laughs> that right there. Don't just. That is just to be looked at and admired. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a nice day. <laughs> Was I the same person that promised you more time for today's after show? Can I use I'm a woman and I have a right to change my mind as an excuse? I don't really have a whole lot to say. I mean, I would talk to you longer if I had more to... Hi, Marco. Have a good show tonight. Thank you, Marco. Oh. Ooh, that cologne. Ooh. Who's reading who?
I was reading that a couple of you were shocked that I was even giving you after shows with the schedule. Why wouldn't I? The thing is, is that all after shows just can't be long, but I have time. Of course I have time for you. Without you, there'd be no Broadway. Without you, there'd be no this show. I know what side my bread is buttered. So, in conclusion, the hair district, the beauty district, 6th Avenue, in like, the 20s. In the 20s. All up and down. You can't miss it. And I'll be able to find everything. Everything. Ducharme, Vitapoint, Dax, Curling what Irons. Was the first one? Ducharme. Oh. You never used Ducharme? I, 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 I grew up on um, <laughs> my mom making, putting Ducharme in my hair and <laughs> also Vitapoint. I know, right? <laughs> Ducharme. Ducharme? <laughs> That's a funny word. <laughs> anyway, uh, and what um, is it? <laughs> it's a it's a moisturizer <laughs> for was. hair. I mean, you, Tristan. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> shade. Here it comes. So, Fourth of July. Shady this way comes. Are you I'm doing not doing anything. anything. Nah, I'm chilling. You're not gonna go out. You're not gonna ride your bike or anything. Hey, I'm gonna ride my bike, but like I'm not traveling. Yeah. I mean, there's no point in traveling. The traffic's going to be messy every place. We're not doing anything. Fourth of July is my first day off from both things since doing this. So I just want to chill. I don't want to go to anybody's house. And I'm going to have my parents over only because they never give us a headache and they're helpful. I am making the deviled eggs, though. I'll tell you that right now. I might come for those deviled eggs. They was off your mama last time. Here's the problem with the deviled eggs, though. Everybody has to leave after they eat them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Double things are messy. I always end up, um, you know how you're supposed to make the yolks over here and have the cutouts over here? Mm -hmm. I get so busy eating the yolks, so by the time it's time to make, put them in the cutouts, there's no like, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no like bubble over afro. <laughs> I gotta cut more onions. It's and, a pain, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Flat Speaking top. of which, a flat top. Uh, exactly. Right. Little Kevin's upstairs getting a fade, and um, after he finished his day of work yesterday, Yesterday he came in here. He said, "Oh, my feet hurt." <laughs> really? He's working hard. Yeah, they Jeez. have him lifting boxes and doing stuff. Yeah. His feet hurt. We're really paying him though. He's walking around with his ID. I haven't seen him all day. That's all right. That's good. Yeah, work. Oh, what are you doing for Fourth of July? I'm heading to New Orleans for the Orleans. What? New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. For the Essence Music Essence Festival? Music. Oh my gosh, you know what I was about to say? I was about to say, that's not until July. But it's July! <laughs> oh my gosh, the year is passing fast. Yeah. Six more months to Christmas. <laughs> right? <laughs> that'd, be six more, that'd be six more months I mean, until the first, until 2014. Mm -hmm. In six months, it'll be... This is very spotlight. Listen. Oh, Tris, I would take uh, this a read, Tris. <laughs> Are you going with friends? Yes, I'm down. Emil, Emil's going to be down there, so I'm going to Oh, Emil Wilbekin. Emil Wilbekin. Oh, we like him. Whole, yeah, the whole essence crew. Yeah. Them, so I'm going to hang with them. Nice. Oh, wait. Yeah. Tell everybody I said, how you doing? I will. They watch regularly. You can tell me this time. Oh, 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 that was a... I, I wouldn't take <laughs> how that. How you doing, Emil? <laughs> and the whole essence group. What's, um, what's... Beyonce's uh, headlining. Oh. Yeah. So you're going to be right there. Yeah. Show me your best single ladies. Come on, I'll sing. All the single ladies. All, all the single, single ladies. ladies. All, all the single ladies. ladies. All the single. Come on, all the single ladies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you turn your back, he did it. Got them, got them. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Up in the club, in an old club. Very <laughs> Look, where is Morel? I don't know. Can I just tell you He's one gone. thing? Mm -hmm. The whole hour went by. He never came out to refresh my lipstick. The whole, I know, no, no, look, the whole hour. This right here is exactly what I had on an hour ago. He never came back out to redo me. Did he leave right, as soon as the double doors opened? <laughs> no, I, he was here. Is he here? He was here. He's not now. But the lips look fantastic. That's our brother. <laughs> they protect each other. Mm -hmm. All right, that's, that's, that's the extent of my conversation for the after show today. <laughs> Honestly, I really but listen. I'll be honest with you. Uh, it is now three o'clock New York time. You know, we take the show yesterday, and um, the curtain call is for eight o'clock tonight, Chicago on Broadway. I have to be at the theater by seven o'clock to do my makeup and get ready to get my mic'd up and everything. 
um, and it'll take me an hour to get across town, so that means I have to leave here at 6 o'clock, and if I go in the office and take off this stuff quickly and talk to Jason Gable, one of my producers, over your shoulder quickly, then I can get like a two-hour nap, or at least an eye rest and a lay down, okay? So I love you for watching today, and, um, and I appreciate you understanding in advance. It's nice to have that day off though, boy, I'll tell you, boy. Boy, I'll tell you, boy. Boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> what am I going to eat? I can't find any place to have steamers. I don't want steamers. The thing is, is that <clears throat> I won't go home now. I have a couple of meetings, and then... Um, I have to be, well, we have an 8 o'clock show at Chicago tonight on Broadway, and so I will leave here. Maybe I'll go shopping before. I think I'll leave here about 4 o'clock and go shopping. Just looking around at stuff. You're right about the trench coat. Burberry. I didn't want to give him a shout out. But there. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Memsor, yes, when are we going to go shopping for my Burberry trench? Well, no, uh, we want to get it on a sale. We want, we want, we want a sale. Look, look, we want a sale. And the other thing is, we might have to buy two to attach the parts to make them long enough. No, no, long enough arms, but what in the men's we'll department? <laughs> and then we'll get it tailored in. No, we, we'll sort it out. But you want, you wanted a heavier one, a camo heavy, and you wanted a. I want the zip out lining. Like, I want to be able to wear it all the way up until the coldest day in April. You know? But it's going to have to be on the new budget. Okay. We killed the old budget. No, I know, but we could at least put one on. Yeah. <laughs> the clothing budget is Thank done. Been you. Thank dead you. for the season. Thanks, Brendan. But no, but you know, there's a time of year for everything. That's what I was telling um, them yesterday is that. You know, there's a time of year for everything. So yeah. when do raincoats? When do you think? I mean, the, th the idea of a trench coat, I truly wear year-round. It just depends on the weight. But like a classic Garbadine trench from Burberry, it's... Never going to go on sale? Yeah. Well, no, no. It, they might, but I think the one that you want... Okay. Won't go on sale. Yeah. We'll find, we'll find something. Speak to the dear folks of Burberry. It was my intention. Uh, I don't want one with spikes. You know, I don't want any of that No, no, no. It wasn't any classic. I don't want no, that no, no, no. Uh, the platypus line. Tristan had me run an errand for him in New Orleans. We can share with her. He what did you get? Hot sauce. My favorite hot sauce. You can have one of mine. So he had me run in the rain, mind you. Nice. To go get you him. really? And how many did you get? I don't know. The men's forgot for me. I then had to check my bag. I was going to say, you checked a bag for Tristan? See the love we have for each other. <laughs> it is so good. That's what I heard. It like is the best, best hot sauce. Do you mind sauce. if I taste it Please now? do. Oh, mine, one, but you can, oh. yeah. It is my favorite hot sauce. I haven't tried it. Not that I would do this then. It's Frank's Red <laughs> Hot in a different bottle. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, it's not. I can drink it. Running in the rain. Ruined my sneakers. How Thanks, dare Tristan. You. <laughs> Thank you, Memsor. You're very welcome, Tristan. And this is very good. It's, um,. It's Frank's like. It has a little bit more of a kick than Frank's. Uh oh. And he's mm. obsessed with it. Oh. I drink it. Not everything. Now whatever I eat today is gonna have to have I'm leaving a bottle here, so you can have some. No, I have three oh, bottles yeah. of Frank's in my <laughs> I'm black. <laughs> black like you love in hip hop Atlanta. <laughs> no, not that black. I am so emb embarrassed. You don't watch that show, do you? No. Do you re do you watch that show? No, I really don't, actually. Yes, you do! <laughs> no, I really does. I don't, I don't watch much um, reality TV. It's ghetto, right? It's less of ghetto. It's like my life is in my own reality show. <laughs> oh! Coming soon. <laughs> Somebody's looking for attention. Please show them attention. <laughs> No, not him. That one. That one. Who, me? You. Yeah. Oh. Yes. You look really cute today. Like a Colombian drug runner. <laughs> oh, one of the village people. <laughs> a Jamaican village po oh, sorry. A Village really? person. Really? <laughs> you see, that was me trying to be polite. <laughs> I'm proper. Really? Uh. Look, um... I don't really have much to say. I had fun on today's show. <laughs> 
I was very well rested. Um, and tonight is Broadway, so. And I have my first meeting of the day. It's 11.15 in 15 minutes, and I really don't want to have it with this makeup on. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna walk with you to the door. talk show online. It's called The Spoonful of Paulo. Oh, all I was thinking about was my food. My mother made me lunch today. Thank you, Mommy. I have three pieces of cauliflower, which I will appropriately adorn with Dijon mustard. I like the harvest course. I like it a little... It depends on what I'm eating. Sometimes I like my Dijon mustard, you know, with no coarseness, and sometimes I like it coarse. But underneath this plain, raw cauliflower, no butter, no nothing. I just like it like a... She made me a piece of salmon. And... Mm. Smells good. Mmm. I won't do it to you, though. I was getting ready to do my nails. I don't feel like going to the nail salon. I was tired of that green polish. I just took it off right after the show ended. And then Paulo came in. I have my book signing tonight, though, at 6 o'clock. So. But I have so many meetings between now and then that I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to stay here in my office. and um, I, I have to do just a small bit of shopping online. I didn't find anything in American Apparel yesterday. Um, and the podiatrist gored out my porn. <laughs> Nasty, right? I know what kind of language you like. <laughs> All right, he took this um, blade and he chipped away at it. And then when the core was left, he gored it out like you do an apple. And then he told me to use toe pads. Um, he said that I have a hammer toe and the corner's on top of the hammer toe. He said, Come on, when can we do it? I said, I'm not, that's to me, stupid surgery. You know, if I had bigger problems with my feet or if I was going under to get my breasts reduced or something like that, then I would just have all my doctors just ready to come out of the closet and do things. Like one time with the anesthesia, you know, you just go under, reduce my breasts, do my hammer toe, fix my shoulder, which, I mean, the acupuncture helped a lot. But it's still, you know, mm, mm, mm. my mom says if I take a fish oil in the morning and at night, it'll lubricate things and keep it going. Um, I've slowed down a little bit on the fish oil thing. Just out of laziness. It was fun yesterday, though. Tristan uh, did not hail the cab. Tristan opened the door. Some of you guessed it. I hailed the cab after being passed by a couple of times. And no, James did not go with me. I wanted to go by myself up to uh, the doctor's office and walk around. And it was fun. It was fun. Thank you for coming along to the point of the cab ride. Um, I have a... My book signing tonight is in Tribeca at Barnes & Nobles here in, in the city. Uh, and I'm really excited. Ask Wendy the book is, is out. It makes me feel very accomplished. Shall we go to the door? Tomorrow we have another wonderful show planned for you. Sierra and Teresa from Jersey Housewives. I don't know who I'm excited to see more. Like, I love the Teresa because Teresa brings the drama. I Teresa is likable to me, you know, because 
I don't know her in, in, you know, in real life. You know, she's likable through the TV. I think it's because I love her girls and I know she wants the best for her girls because she's not using her kids as props in her life. Do you know what I mean? Like, like she's a real mom and she really loves the hell out of Joe. And Joe has done her dirty, but if, if she stays, then it just makes for more entertaining TV. But I love Teresa. I do. I love her. And Sierra. I, God doggone it she's one of the most beautiful women in the world i think sierra personally speaking um i cannot figure out what it is about her music that you guys haven't been feeling for the past few years but i'm telling you right now that she's gotten back together with um her original producer jazzy Faye, and the album that she is coming to promote right now um is sierra's back to her original pr production team so um, and she's still young and she's still got it and she does that matrix dance and she socializes and she's beautiful and she's plugged in. She was at the Met Gala. I mean, you got to be real plugged in to be there. Um, please watch the show and, and give her conversation um, a real good ear and then let's get out there and support her music. I, I just adore her. I, I do. So Sierra and um, Teresa tomorrow. I'm excited. And you have yourself a beautiful day. Bye-bye. Please shut the name and share for all your personal belongings. Make sure you have everything, everything in here. I feel so free. Oh. A little bit of sweat escaped um, right after Hot Topics. Just a little bit. Nothing compared to what usually ha happens. This is a t-shirt dress. So, you know, a t-shirt dress in a color. This is the real litmus test if it doesn't work. A little a sweat escaped. He blew dry my underarms. Haven't touched them. I just finished making promos and stuff, so the show has been over for about 40 minutes. I was just doing summer promos and everything, and now they're just letting the audience out. So I sweat one time. Big deal. You knew what my problem was. So now I am going to, um, oh, I have an interview in my office with Vlad TV. I've got an interview with Don Lemon later on today uh, for CNN. And I also have an interview with A&E. Biography. They're doing something on me. Rutabaga means the killer is not in sight <laughs> and she's almost in her room. A lot of you guessed it. Because why is it so dark back here? Everybody went home already. Exactly. My mouth is watering because I'm thinking of getting a Subway tuna sandwich. Wait, do you want to talk in here? Huh? Just for a moment. Okay. Step down. Careful, Tristan. Step down. I think Vlad TV might already be set up in the office. I, all I know is that I was instructed to keep on my dress and keep on my wig and makeup from the show because we're doing stuff. And I should be finished doing stuff by like four o'clock this afternoon. Then I'm gonna occupy myself. I'm gonna occupy myself and then go over to watch what happens. So my parents are good with little Kev and uh, so I'm free to do my thing. I love you for watching. I hope you enjoyed Kerry, and I hope you enjoyed David Allen Greer. And, uh, you know, I'll check you out tomorrow, okay? Thank you for understanding. Bye-bye. Bye, boss. Great job. Thank you. Bye. Angela Dean, an old friend. Season two. These might even be season one. An old friend. One of them I'm getting on Friday, and one of them I'm about to make my appointment. I'm going next week. Two two major procedures that are going to change my life in a big way, and they involve two different doctors. Want to know what they are? Uh uh, the boobs stay. I'm, I'm going to get uh, my underarms done.
a one-hour procedure in the dermatologist's office. And I will not share with you exactly what it is or have the rest of the conversation until I can give you a comprehensive report on what it is. Ooh, ooh, stuff, stuff. The corn, the corn, the corn. Oh, Woo! And then the other thing is I'm going to my foot doctor, my podiatrist who did my bunions, and I'm getting my corn removed. That's it. Well, you know what? That little cheap, cheerful stuff that you get at the drugstore that you drop on it and it's like acid melted away, that's cute for a moment. But the problem is, is that it thins the skin and now the corn area is more sensitive than ever. And, I, you know, there's only one thing wrong with my feet that prevents me from really walking well five hours after stilettos, and that is the corn. So I'm getting it removed. It is an investment. I've tried corn pads and all that crap. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I am going to a real doctor, Joni, and I'm getting my corn really removed. Get it done right. And as far as these underarms, I've had prescription pads with de with uh, clinical deodorant, and I've used clinical this and clinical that, and Botox under the arms and the whole bit. Let me tell you something. The only way to take care of sweating is to kill the sweat duck, the sweat ducks. Can you put that earring back on? And you, why? I'm gonna do an Instagram picture of a pretty picture, please. At least give me that. <laughs> Bye guys. Um, and you know, um, and I've done all of my research. I hope when you go to your doctors and you're making big decisions, you do your own research too. And uh, the fact is, is that there are over four million sweat ducts in your body, and only two percent of them are under your arms, which means you don't need them. And all they're doing is making the dry cleaning bill expensive here, whereas I can use that extra money and buy some more shoes. So I'm getting them removed. Good luck, boss. See you later. 145. What are you having for lunch? Uh, we have steak, potatoes, and spinach downstairs. Oh! It's actually pretty good. It's good lunch. <laughs> Want some? Maybe. No, I ordered Can I get two my pins done? Does it work on guys? Yeah, it does work on guys. I'm you know who's sweater. getting his... You know who... Um, I, I consulted about it? Who? Dr. Oz. Really? You talked about it? I did my research, and then I consulted the doctor, and Dr. Oz said, yep. You're a smart lady. Yep. We'll see you at 145. Yep. When I went to Dr. Oz's show the other day, I already, I already had what I wanted to talk to the doctor about, personally speaking, because he's always asking about your health problems, and we've already been through thyroid disease, and I, you know, uh, but this hyperhidrosis is a thing. It, it is a thing, um, and my wardrobe stylist knows. Oh yes, thank you. The kids gave me so many DJ Intense bracelets. The kids in the audience. Don't feel bad if you weren't that familiar with him. I mean, you know, I'm familiar with him through Googling. I still can't understand being old school and coming from radio and, and knowing DJs that Zuga Zuga on the radio, how it is that they could be Zuga Zuga in all these years and still not be the highest paid. D like, where did he come from, Armin? Doesn't matter. It's where he's going. He's at the top and I guess he's going even <laughs> higher. Sometimes you got to surround yourself by young people in order for them to teach, teach you what's up. I never felt so old. Everybody's like, what? I was like, okay. Yeah. So now I'm young. The kids in the audience, they gave me all these different bracelets. Did you order the tuna fish? Mm -hmm. I bought my own crackers today. I'm going to have tuna fish. I wouldn't mind having a little bit of steak from across the street. Okay. I'll grab you some. Yes, yeah, so just slip it over to me. Okay. I'm an animal. I love beef. And I love meat. What's the point of having teeth? <laughs> you know, if everything's going to be soft. Anyway, what I was telling you yeah, is, um, you know, I, I've i sweat through, Memsor does put shields in my dresses and things like that. And what happens, Memsor? I sweat right through. I sweat right through. Might as well have sanitary pads on your own. Yeah. Well, believe me, I, believe me you, I was thinking of that. I mean, you know, it's No, it's but just, then it's too bulky. And then it's going to be too bulky. Yeah. But look, do you see? Just a little something. I mean, I that's, just... That's not bad today. It's not bad today, but you want to know what? It's also maybe because I'm wearing a sleeveless dress. We keep the studio, no lie, at like 50 degrees at my request so that I can move. And, and, and even 50 degrees and sleeveless, everybody in the audience is freezing and I'm walking around sweating. Mm -hmm. And I only sweat under my arms and it's like really ridiculous. So, you know, that was what I wanted to talk to Dr. Oz about as long as we're going to talk about something. I wanted to tell him that I'm cupping and, you know, doing stuff. I covered my cupping today with um, a little bit of makeup. 
um, that I'm cupping and I'm doing acupuncture and you know I, I, I am starting to be a firm believer in Eastern medicine and so I wanted to talk to him about that but the big thing is hyperhidrosis and I wanted to know what the doctor could tell me about it so that I could share it with you so he said well Wendy I I understand you want to talk about hyperhidrosis and he we get up and we walk over his to his demo table and he pulls the machine he pulls back this curtain and it's the mirror dry machine that's what I'm getting done so I had no idea that's what he was gonna recommend it's already what I decided to do so it's Dr. Oz approved it's good enough for me I'm hosting an award show <laughs> at the Met on Sunday yes Zolling. it's for the Broadway community what's it called Broadway.com awards. Broadway .com awards, and I'm the host. Broadway loves sparkle and lots of hairspray and big hair. I want to wear controversy. Got you. And of course, I'm going with the boys. I love you for watching. See you tomorrow. Over the days, and I don't really think I'm a good teacher. And today's show exhausted me in a good way. started with hot topics which I love you know I love hot topics that Claudia Jordan I can't with this show so good cast of the game was cute right that was my first time meeting Laura in London don't know much about her dimples are everything she blew me away with the dimples. Her outfit was from Rihanna's line. Yeah. It's always funny when the girls come with um, the really short dresses. My cameramen have to work around those shots. My cameraman and Ellie. We have Ellie here too. She works the cameras. And Jay. Good for him. Big role in the game. Brandy. I immediately told Antoine. I want my controversy wig twirled up like that. I think controversy can become what Brandy's hair was. It's just cute. If controversy can't become that, then we just have to buy a whole nother wig. I can't wait until July when my wig line comes out and all I have to do is go into my inventory and pull stuff. Oh my God. It must be how Jessica Simpson feels with her clothing line since she has a clothing line and she's one of the few that actually wears her stuff pretty religiously. Angela Dean. Angela Dean. Yeah. Ah! I knew I recognized this dress. <laughs> Angela Dean, same dress. Uh. He literally uh, sleep, sleeps as we commute here. He goes to sleep practically as soon as we get here, right there. And I'm briefing with, with uh, producers and everything. And he just goes to sleep. He can go up to his dad's office. There's a couch there or whatever. But I make it comfortable in my office. Plus, I got snacks. It's clean and good. My husband's office is clean, too. But he wants to be next to his mom, sleeping spring break by the way do you remember when i tried on that blonde wig for you the short one and i said i would never wear it look what it well, look what he's done to it now he's dyed it and i don't feel like trying it on right now but i have to tell you it doesn't look so bad it doesn't look so bad oh, come on in what what doesn't look bad nothing your eyes that's what i'm trying to tip to is the worst looking thing ever what He's too big to tiptoe. <laughs> everybody can't. Everybody can't look like a toddler. By the way, what? Shout out to the fashion queens. Oh yeah, I like your show. Hey, uh, I, I do. Hi, Derek, Hi Bevy. I, I do. It's it's cute. Bloop. 
<laughs> Tomorrow's show is going to be another big one. Cameron Matheson stopping by. And we already got some breaking news on some big hot topics. Wow. Yes. Ooh. Yep. We're going to talk about it tomorrow. Tune in. Okay. I'm trying to give a teaser. <laughs> he looks cool, doesn't he? No, you just don't. For once in his life. I mean, kind of, sort of, like when he puts on the stupid. Haters, haters. Hate oh my okay, <laughs> goodbye, Antoine. Okay, oh, please. Haters. Hey Love you for watching. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Daddy, you follow football. Do you follow the Jets? Yes, yes. Do you know who that is? Who? The kid. Yes, 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 from the Jets. Where did he come from? What team did he come oh, from? Oh, I don't know. I think you he's fresh out of team? college. Oh, I don't know. He's fresh out of college? He's out of college. Oh, okay. Wait, Daddy, cl close your ears. Come here. <laughs> The only reason why I say he's better eye candy than Henry is because he has money and he's brand new to New York, so he doesn't know the score of how things go down here. You could take him any place and he would be impressed. 25 is perfect. And he had a high booty and you couldn't see his eyes, but his eyes are light brown. Like, light brown. Like, if he was a girl, I would think he's wearing contacts. Uh, but he wasn't. And when I hugged him, it was all there. That's all. All right, um, let's take this picture. Dad taking a picture of Wendy. Daddy, what are you doing? I can send this picture to you. No, Dad can take his own. That's pretty good. He has an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't. There's something wrong. There's something wrong with my, with my thriftiness. Um, I love my outfit today. Thank you, John. LJ gave me a thumbs up on okay. the outfit too. Shoes are good. Yeah. J. Crew. I'm gonna tell you something about J. Crew shoes. Daddy, I'll meet you in the office. Okay. You don't have to stand here and listen to every word. I'm playing. Daddy, um, we're gonna be leaving for the bake sale. What time do we have to be there? 12. 12 o'clock. All right, so we're gonna No, be we're leaving here at 12. You gotta be there at 12.15. At 12.15, okay. Daddy, are you hungry? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Ro, he probably wants some chicken noodle soup or something. Okay. Daddy, just order something. Look in the menu book. You don't understand Ooh, how much my family <laughs> eats. That was good. We eat a lot, which is disgusting. My father can pile it away. Um, what I love about my outfit today is any girl could do it. Talbot skirt, size four. Wow. Uh huh. Um, Old Navy, extra large from the men's department because for me, I I don't I don't want the gap. You know the big boob gapping. Uh, the reason that I tie, I like to tie a blouse at the waist. My reasoning for doing that is because there's something very uncomfortable about the straight jacket feeling of tucking a shirt in. And I can't wear it out and blousy, otherwise it looks like I've got a giant belly because that's the curse of you know having the boobs so big. So, but I like I like a waist tie. You're gonna see me in this look often during the show um, for the for the season. And the shoes, J. Crew. Can I tell you something? You know I love all my shoes, but every pair of J. Crew shoes that I have. Bye, everyone. Love you too. Every pair of J. Crew really shoes big. I have Clear. are comfortable. Bye, Brendan. See you tomorrow. I can't wait to catch up with Paris Hilton. I liked my hair today also. Thank you. You're and where's Morale? I wanted to tell him thank you for that. I was just telling them about J. Crew mm -hmm. and how much I love, love, love. Now, how much are the shoes going to set them back? I told them about $200. About 260 uh, two something. About 260 yeah. That's just about, it's under three years. I'll tell you what. They don't set you back as much as these right here. No, and not. these are hella uncomfortable. Well, not this pair. These are actually comfortable. Those are good ones, yeah. It's the your yeah. ones up there, man. Yeah, the highest <laughs> ones are the ones that aren't comfortable. <laughs> you send me tipping. I like several crow shoes today. Yeah, they're nice. They're nice. Thing, nice. nice. Um, I wanted to tell you that I love my makeup today. Aww. Because you know I don't like to wear a lot of makeup. And I just let him have his way. <laughs> and then when I look to see what it is, it's, it's every color in the rainbow <laughs> around my face. But I insist, I know you, a lot of you all have said it, you don't need lashes and all that stuff. You look better without the makeup. P.S. I think so also. But I've got to wear makeup. Well, y'all shut up. Wait, without reading, can you oh. explain to them 
TV is totally different from every day. TV, you need more things. You need to build your face up. You need to contour. You need to highlight those things you need for TV. Why do, for I, need, every day, why do I need you don't eyelashes? Need that. Eyelashes to make your eyes just look more attractive. It just you can't see your lashes from all the way over there. You know. It just gives it gives a subtle highlight to your um, lash line. Well, I like the way I looked when I looked in the monitor. Can we wear this makeup more it's often just like, than not? It's treated like a wig. Okay. It's just like if you just went out there with regular hair. Well, I would if I didn't wear if I had regular but hair. But it would not be a regular it. style. Um, it it would be you know it would be pizzazz. That's what makeup does. It just adds pizzazz. To what's already beautiful, but just a little. Not all though. girls that wear makeup are beautiful. What I like about when I when you guys say that, um, you're you might not know this because sometimes I'm you sorry can be for saying shut up, y'all. I'm just in a grouchy mood. Sorry. Have you heard from Lawrence or Derek? No, I gotta call queens? them. I have to call them. I'm gonna call them right now. Tell them I'm very serious. Like I, I would like to have even a quote, you know, or give give their telephone number maybe to Hot Topics. Tell them that Hot Topics is going to call them. Okay. And we're going to take their quote directly because if the Portia and and Cordell are playing with their marriage. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't I like feel that. Totally deceived. You do too. Yes, because I was really in. But then that's my fault. But then people are probably saying, then why Why is it that we stuck by Nene and Greg? Well, we stuck by Nene and Greg because they legitimately... I believe them. I they believe legitimately them got a divorce. Other. She started making money, and he started being a bit of a user. Yeah. And so that calls for divorce. Totally different than Portia and Cordell if what they're doing is deception. Totally different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guy Candy was good, wasn't he? Where my speed, but he was hot. I mean, I wouldn't kick him out of bed. There's nothing like that first one, though. Henry. Henry. That's just a point of reference. We need to. If that was the first one out of the gate. If I had to choose between the two, I have to say they are both hot for different reasons. Like, they both look good in two different ways. The thing about Guy Candy is. Even though I'm married, you know, I'm not dead, okay? Exactly. So I can talk to you. And yeah, my husband is very secure in me talking because that's all it is. Right. Um, however, my kind of guy candy is the Henry makeup. I'm going to tell you why. I don't need you to be making millions of dollars by playing a sport. I've got money. I've got a car. I'll pick you up. I will drop you or, or give, send you in a cab back home. I want my guy candy to be 25 is a perfect age. I just want him to look good mm -hmm. and if ever feel good. and feel good and feel good <clears throat> and not have a way out by saying that's it I'm leaving you know man with money mm -hmm. grab his keys mm -hmm. and go on about his mm -hmm. business and I would take you around my friends like a, a Hamptons party or something like that but it would be the silent kiki joke right it would be the silent kiki joke <laughs> you gotta watch your friends that's fine. Look, just as easy as I got you, I'll get another one. Oh, okay. Okay, Guy Candy is so dismissed. Like gum, when the flavor goes, you just throw it out. Come on, Vita, twerk. Get it. Oh, I got a dress on. <laughs> you don't know how to twerk either. <laughs> Vita's filling in for Brendan. Brendan's out there. Come on, James, twerk! Twerk, James! Yeah, I don't twerk. <laughs> I know who twerks. I'm gonna go over here, I might hurt something. <laughs> Joni twerks. Mm -hmm. I work. Oh. Woo! When I saw Stevie Ryan on Stevie TV on VH1 twerk, all of a sudden I felt jealous and angry at the same time. I love Stevie. Pretty as all get out, funny as hell. She's been on our show before. And uh, she had, on last week's episode, which was the season opener, she was addicted to twerking and they sent her to rehab, her family. And it was funny, she was doing it effortlessly. You know, in the character she was in. Just tw just twerking. Tristan, is this a new camera? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm testing it out. For, uh, the Chicago behind the scenes stuff. Oh yeah, do they know about that? You know now. You know now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys, the cat is out of the bag. We are going to give you more after show than you could imagine. Twerk, twerk it. it and twerk it and twerk it. Yeah, we're going out in the streets and you're going to be following me. 
Let me ask them. Does anybody here know how to twerk? You don't know how to twerk either? She does. You, you know how to twerk? Can you come here and twerk? Can you just twerk right here? Please? Teach me how to twerk! Summer is here! You've heard the expression though, right? You just didn't know, you've heard, you never heard twerk? It's T-W-E-R-K. And I can't, I can't do it. But everybody can do it. Except for apparently me and you. And you. And you. The bootleg Robin quivers. I called her that before. Hey, Vita, I just called you bootleg Robin quivers. You know you look like Robin. Do you know how to twerk? <laughs> Where is Marco? Marco. He twerk. Marco twerks yeah. and pops and locks. Mm, 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 mm. I don't have time for Marco's nonsense. Oh, that's nice. Joe? Yes. Do you know how to twerk? No, I have not twerk. Oh. <laughs> Jimmy twerks for you. <laughs> I know somebody who twerks. Come on in here. I dance, but not bad. I am not twerking. Get out of here. Please. Uh uh. Mm mm. Why? Huh? Please. No. Summer's here. I have to know how. Mm mm. We can do it in secret, but not on film. Can you turn your TV off? For Dad? No. You are. Not, I'm not twerking. Wait. Can you just tell me when? When? When can we twerk together? In private. But not here. Mm mm. Mm-mm, it's a secret. But when she does learn, y'all know that I taught her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Trisha Yearwood. First of all, the honey on the steak and the pineapple juice for the marinade. I gotta get to Williams-Sonoma and buy those he that heavy pan, though. A I cast iron? Yeah, I don't have one. You can get one from um, Whole Foods, too. They got them cheap. Yeah, I don't, I don't shop there. I have to go someplace within my root home if, if it's not from the studio to my exact house then it's if it's two blocks away then it's out of my mm -mm. <sighs> trisha was really nice she's a good girl right but that artist the artist was the bomb i was crying in the back yeah like, she's amazing i don't know what she's an old lady in a young person body. but have i ever told you all this how expensive it is to paint mm -hmm. i was so glad that we were able to give that to her that uh, gift card uh, because painting is not a cheap hobby. The, buying the canvases, even a cheap canvas is not cheap. Uh, you know, you pay 60 bucks for what you call a cheap canvas. And for the size canvas that she got, that's like a $250 canvas. It was Dang. thin. So that's like 250 on the thin side. And thin canvases sometimes tend to bow. So then they're not going to lay flat on your wall, you see? So it's very important that you do not skimp on the canvas. It's very important that you get a nice heavy canvas so it stays laying on your wall. She gonna get me doing something. In the meantime, be twerking. in the meantime, <laughs> um, um, and then the paints are really expensive. So I was very, very happy to meet her and I love the painting that she gave me and I have an appreciation for what she does for a living and I hope that she enjoys the gift card and Trisha Yearwood was just the bomb and I'm going to make that, not today, today I'm gonna get the steak. Uh, I need the pan from William Sonoma and I got to buy the ingredients and then Trisha said let everything sit for 24 hours Go to wendyshow.com. So I'm gonna make mine tomorrow. I'm gonna let it sit overnight tonight So as I'm walking you out, I want you to know that I haven't forgotten about my after show family regarding Chicago Tristan is testing out a brand new camera where we are going to take you after show family from the studio here to all my behind the scenes stuff uh, dealing with Chicago. Whether it's a simple cab ride, then vocal lessons, then being there rehearsing in leggings and you know, like flash dance. I think that's gonna be like my kind of costumes when I when I rehearse, flash dancey, and um, getting myself together. Then I've gotta learn the makeups, the wig, and the whole bit. So you're gonna be a part of the experience and I hope that you appreciate that I remembered you because I do appreciate that we are a special group here at the after show and I had to do something special for you. So Tristan will figure out whether this camera is a good one. You will of course criticize him and let him know whether it's blurry or whatever other kind of criticisms that you give him. You give him fever. And, um, and I will be here waiting for you tomorrow, okay? 
I love you for watching the debt uh, today. And Alyssa Milano is here tomorrow. Take care. Bye. Twerk it! I don't want to take it off. All right, I'll take it off. Fine. I'll take it off and raise my arm. And believe me, this is the material that would show it all. And it's hot. And it's hot as hell in the studio. I don't mind posing like this. You know why? It's the weekend. Jeez. Thank you, John. You too. <laughs> Thanks, John. It was such a um, situation with this dress today. It's a really tasteful dress, but we were pinning and sewing and doing stuff to the décolleté. At the end of the day, we got it up as much as we possibly could to put it up here. It would be like it's straining to keep it where it was. There'd be too much cleavage. It's a tasteful dress, though. This is a very good dress. Thank you. Holla, holla, holla. Thanks. I sure will. All those new gifts from Dr. Gadget. Every last one of them was good. What? Rutabaga. I can't even figure out which one is my favorite. I mean, I love glamorous jewelry. But I also love. Hey! 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 What are you doing? Nothing. We're waiting for you to pass. <laughs> chairs that belong in my office. What? What's going on? Don't worry, we're okay. Somebody's trying to give me a gift. Oh, somebody's trying to give me more dining room table chairs for my office. Happy Mother's Day. Oh. Get in there. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. We love you. Oh. Is this the rest of the massage? Yes. Thanks, honey. Oh, it's hot as hell in here. <laughs> <laughs> we can blow out some candles if you No, I do have an air conditioner. It's not like the caveman days. I just keep it hot in here. Happy Mother's Day. I'm Lillian. Thank you. Hi, Lillian. Hi. Pleasure. I've got big, thick, black skin. <laughs> that's okay. I've got sharp elbows, and I know how to get in there. Okay, that's what she <laughs> said. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. So, <sighs> how is your body feeling? Tight and tense. Are there any areas that have more tension? Um, yes, I'll be honest with you. Up at my shoulders. I'm going to take my wig off and put on a shower cap. Only because I'm a controlled environment and I know that there are no secret cameras here to, um, you know, take the picture. Do you want me not to do your scalp then? Because sometimes I do scalp at the end. I can do it through your shower cap if you like. No, I don't need the scalp done. Okay. Do you have anything medical I should know about? Medical. Places like slip discs or places you don't want me to be sore? No, I'm good. I'm going to stay mostly on my stomach, or do I have to turn over? You could do both. Yeah, no, I would rather just stay on my stomach. Okay, that's fine. Because I never get massages. All right. Wow, okay. So I'm going to leave you. Okay. Okay, and you get undressed. Yeah. You slide under here face down. Oh, what a nice thing. Right. Thanks, Lillian. You know what? Give me like 10 minutes. to. Uh, I want to take off my makeup and everything. You do your thing. Okay. I'm right here waiting. All right, come on. I'll let you out when I let you out. Okay. <laughs> Hi. I had fun today. Who's that? I thought they all left. Antoine? Morale? Mimsor. Don't you hate when nobody answers you back?
Nobody was there. You know, the killer is every place. Car next to you, at your home, at your work. I liked my outfit today. You know, it's just a, it was a very, very simple Diane von Furstenberg dress. Um, I must admit that it was about six inches longer when we originally got it. And, uh, you know, after debating, because I know th there's a new length. The new length is, like, just below the knee. That's the new length. Well, you know what? Everybody doesn't look great in the new length all the time. And I, this dress, you know, honest to goodness, even Diane von Furstenberg sometimes gets it wrong. Um, do you do that with your clothes? Like this zipper right here? This zipper right here was not in the dress. This dress we got maybe second or last season, third season of the show. So I'm going to show you what I did. And a Diane von Furstenberg dress, listen, for, you know, about 300 some of the dresses are a little bit more expensive. Some of the dresses are a little bit less expensive. But and I don't know exactly how much this was. But it started out to be a dress like this. You slip it over your head. You and I have talked about this. I start hyperventilating just thinking of squeezing something over my head and then using a side zipper. Girls, you know what this is, the side zipper. You zip it all the way up. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that anymore. So the dress is a size 12. I, I, I have lost a couple of pounds. You know, I like everything snatched and I might be dead wrong for this, but I think it could have been tighter here, but it fit great in the boobs. But I'm not going to have it altered because in a few years when I start to come undone, um, I still want classic dresses in my closet and I might not feel like buying them at that particular point in a size 16 or whatever. Um, or 20 if I keep eating. Um, and then this zipper, uh, yeah, it was my instruction to send all of my dresses, the Diane von Furstenbergs of this particular design with the v-neck, the same one, send them all to the alterer and I want silver zipper detail to give it edginess. My instruction was also to close up the side zipper, but um, they did not close up the side zipper, so I'll be sending them back eventually. And I certainly don't think that the dress was too short. I have 40 inch legs, so, um, you know, I like showing them off. They have cellulite, I don't care. I still like showing them off. I have knock knees, I don't care. I still like showing them off because who has 40 inch legs? And one day I feel like I'll, I'll regret not showing them off. So if it's short, it's for me. <laughs> I see you looking at my son. I forgot to tell you that little, a lot of you all were asking me, but I just assumed that you knew that, that Kev is 12 years old. He turned 12 in August, and um, I had no heels on in that picture. So, you know, I'm 5 feet 11. I'm talking about the after show from Friday. Friday's after show, this past Friday. Uh, our son stopped by, and, and some of you all... Um, were asking me, you know, about him. Well, he weighs like 200 pounds, maybe 195 now, maybe 205. Uh, his pediatrician appointment for his basketball physical is actually next week, so I'll be able to let you know exactly. But he's weighed uh, the same 200 pounds for the past three years, if you can possibly believe that. But he has gone through incarnations of being, um, you know, chubby like his mother and like his father and except he's gotten a hold of his quicker than than I ever did certainly um, which is just you know it's just one less burden for a parent to deal with when your kid is not um, overweight now a doctor's chart would say he's overweight because he's only 12 years old but uh, you know my doctor fortunately does not use that chart he uses the chart of well look at his mom well, look at his dad. Mrs. Hunter, you're going to have a big boy. He's going to be six feet five. And I have no idea how much he's going to weigh. But, you know, when I look at Shaq or I look at uh, Magic Johnson, you know how neither of them have ever been string beans. They're kind of filled out. I, I think that might be my Kevin's body type. Either way, um, he acts 12. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like there, there is... There is no, there is no denying that. So I was telling you I'm working on this book project, only I've had to hold back on telling, reminding you to send me Ask Wendy's um, because, and Tristan, I guess you're working, you are the internet department, you all are working together as well, but we can't do anything else regarding the solicit until, my palms are sweating as I talk about this, we can't do anything until a formal press release is released. Oh, I'm chomping at the bit to write this book. Relationship book. 
relationship with your son and you, the relationship with your mother, the relationship with your husband or wife, boyfriend, next door neighbor, relationship. I'm going to go vote right after this. My son hasn't called yet, so I guess he didn't have half day of school, but I'm thinking he probably had half day of school. I'm scared to call the school. Do you ever get like that? Because you don't want them to recognize your voice and you don't want to come out of the closet and say what you have to say. Like what I really do need to do is call the school and say, is there half day? But I don't, and you know, and I disguise my voice, but then maybe they'd say, Wendy, is this you? Oh, excuse me. Mrs. Hunter, is this you? You know, in school, in the office, they always call everybody Mr. and Mrs. I always find that funny. So I call all the teachers and the guidance counselors and the, and the principal, I'm Mr. and Mrs. too. <laughs> um, all right, so that's, uh, that's what's going on in my world, squirrel. Did you like the ponytail? Wait, come here, let me show you. I've renamed it my Taylor Swift wig. It's actually from my at-home collection. My at-home collection of wigs, or just wigs that aren't so over-curled and so hairsprayed and all that other kind of stuff. But I brought this in today, and I said to um, uh, the hair department, Antoine, I want to wear this today. I want to wear this today. I want to wear this today. He was like, well, I'm not so sure. I said, look, I'll try it on for you before I go out onto the floor and do the show. You continue twirling. When I came in, he was twirling her up, which you know I love her. We all love her, right? So he was twirling her up. I said, look, continue twirling her up. She is very, very low maintenance. I said, but I want to wear it today. Um, and this is a ponytail, actually, that I do wear around my town, this ponytail wig. I've decided to donate it to the hair department just until he gets his own and cuts the bangs perfectly. And I'm taking it back home because when I tool around town, I'll show you what I do on the weekends. All right. I will take the wig. Do you know how you girls... This is actually how I wear my natural hair, too, at home. If, you know, like... Not that much loose hair. Or loose skin. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I can't really perfect it right now, but I do something like this, and then I wrap it around neatly. And I throw on, you know, pink lipstick, the pink th that you love, or you'll get to love. It matches the walls. And I'll pull down just a couple of tendrils, not these real long, funky ones. And I'll throw on, you know, a pair of, you know, studs or a silver hoop. And I will go on about my business. Like the rest of the girls in town. I'm going to get my hair done or whatever. Um, and, but for the show, of course, I wouldn't wear it like that. I have to pull off a little bit more of a sophisticated edge. <laughs> so I thought a low one was cute today. And actually, Antoine ended up liking it. I don't think that he was just selling me wolf tickets because I honestly do listen to my team and I'd like to hear their valid reasons. So I think that was my first time wearing a ponytail here on the show, but I need a ponytail wig, I told you, because my edges, they, you know, they're thin. It's like, ugh, I don't feel like dealing with that. I don't like a tight ponytail. I don't like onion head. I don't like any of that stuff. I used to wear a ponytail all the time, actually. <clears throat> right... Here I am pregnant with uh, my little bruiser, and these are my natural bangs. Those are my natural bangs, and but this is five pounds of hair, and this, I was like eight months, this is the full 103 pounds, by the way, uh, that I gained. Um, but still working it. Look at my see-through gown. I'm going to work it till I die. Anyway, um, but that's how I used to love to wear ponytails. Uh, then things happen. You catch a disease. Your hair thins. And you learn to make do. I love you for watching today. I'll see you next time. Bye.
I feel like crying. But then again, it is the third of the month. I feel so emotional. Amanda Bynes makes me want to cry. I like what Dylan Howard said today um, from Radar Online about Amanda. Um, I liked his comprehensive report. Um, and when she started really spiraling out of control, we saw that over the past maybe week and a half since the last time you and I got together. I so badly wanted to call you or something. Bang on the doors to the studio and say, come on, let's talk about it. It's time for hot topics. I'm so glad to be back to work. An all hot topic show was a perfect way of coming back, don't you think? I mean, I love my celebrity guest. Tomorrow, Trisha Yearwood's coming over. Um, on Wednesday, it's, a, it's Alyssa Milano. She's got that new song, Mistresses. I love my celebrity. Hey! Where's my Barbara Streisand book? Trista. Did you just move it over there? No. no, what? No, it's not in here. Did you see what she wrote me? No, I didn't get to peek inside. I saw it up on backstage, but I didn't look. That's between me and Barbara Streisand. I pr now, now who's got the best device in the whole After Show family? I do. It's a Q10. Don't ask me how to use it. You have to call me. I can't call you. I have Blackberry Q10 um, lessons in about two hours. After my 12 inch foot long. I went from having no phone action to having, I think, the newest best phone out right now. Thank you, Alicia Keys. When I got the phone, I said, did I ever tell her that I don't tech? Why'd she do that? That's a very nice thing to do. Okay, so it's not just one song that I'm singing on Broadway. It's two. I forgot the Just Be Good to Mama song, but there's also a song called Class. So I have to learn my class song, and it's been really intense with the vocal lessons while we were on hiatus. I mean, really intense. I'm very excited, though. I didn't feel so good in my dress today, because I know what's going to happen, you know, being periodic and everything. Girls, you know what we go through guys will never understand. It's like your body sends a warning shot and the warning shot is you're grouchy as hell and don't want to, you know, cap off at the wrong person. I feel grouchy and I feel just tolerant of anything. One wrong move and I'm going to go crazy. So it's probably just best, probably best that I just get left to myself here in the office. Um, and then for a whole week, you also are not just grouchy, but you want to eat every and anything. And I'm doing my best. These are only chocolate-covered almonds. And it's only a tab from the 70s. It was so gorgeous for these 90-something degree days. It was so gorgeous. Although here in New York City... If you are in New York City, or you know what, no matter where you are, please let this be a peaceful summer. It is really ridiculous to wake up this morning and find out that there were 25 people shot in a 48-hour period here in New York. 25 people! They said that is 5% of the entire 2013 city shootings. We're not even halfway through the year. But you know what that is. That's people being hot. 90 degrees, 95 degrees. People are up in arms. No home training. Well, no point in me occupying any more of your time. I'm not going to continue to ramble with you. I'll just walk you to the door and just say, thank you for waiting for me. 
I know you had a lot of choices while we were gone. And I know encore presentations are cute, but the hot topics are not up to the minute. And I know you need that because I need it too. I can't wait to meet Trisha Yearwood. I watch her cook on Saturday mornings. Her show comes on, I think, 10 o'clock in the morning, Saturday mornings on the Food Network. Just so soothing and nice. We're going to have two segments with her. One where um, we sit on the couch and another one where we cook. So I love you for watching. I'm so glad we're back together. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi. I'm trying to race out of here. Did I ever share this part with you? You know this legendary painting that I have here done by Martine? He did that for me back when I was on the radio. Um, if you ever shot Patricia Fields, who is the world famous stylist who did a lot of Sex in the City, this is Martine. He does the bag designs for Patricia Fields. And he also has scarves and things like that. So I feel like a really lucky girl when I see that somebody thought enough of me to do, do that. Oh, I'm on my way back home to Asbury Park, 07712. I'm meeting with the mayor, and I am going by to thank the firefighters, because, you know, they do a lot of work. Uh, in the times of disasters. Um, I was born in Asbury Park on Central Avenue. And uh, then they had the riots of 1970 and my parents moved us to Ocean Township. So I was, you know, like five years old when we moved. Um, but Asbury is so close to Ocean Township that they actually share the same zip code. And there were a lot of cute boys in Asbury growing up too. And it's where I got my first hair weave and um, our, my childhood church was there. <clears throat> it's probably still standing, Second Baptist Church. We're going to a mission, not a mission, but a, um, we're going to a, um, a shelter that's housing a couple hundred families. <sighs> I'm going with food, bringing food, and you know, I cleaned out a lot of, um, a lot of the, last minute extra stuff that I had been meaning to do anyway. It's so like I bagged up clothes last week from our house, but then when we made the arrangements to go to Asbury Park, I said, there's always more stuff to bag up, including, I mean, people need everything. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, women need tampons, babies need formula, people need toothbrushes, this, the simplest stuff, band-aids. Then you get to the bigger things, like people need coats. It's starting to get cold and people need a little, a little good cheer and a little optimism. So that's what I'm there to do. And, uh, <clears throat> and this is how I'm doing it because I'm going home. I graduated from um, Ocean Township High School, as you know, but Ocean Township uh, has well, used to, have their graduation at Convention Hall, which is right there on the Asbury Park boardwalk. I would suspect that Convention Hall is sonic. That's all. I would suspect that Convention Hall is almost no more. Um, I'll find out when I get down there. You know, my mom teacher in Asbury Park. My father at one point was a teacher in Asbury and coached the basketball. I don't have to go into it. The point is, is that you know I'm from the Jersey Shore and Asbury Park, you know, means as much as they possibly can, just like Belmar. Just like Seaside Heights, just like every place. So I'm going. Come on. All right, my husband's stuff. Right, he's going to call me later and he's going to say, have you seen my glasses? And have you seen my vest? And I'll say, your glasses are on my desk and your vest is on the chair. Do I look like a she-wolf? <laughs> I feel like it. <laughs> you know, having a lot of hair and rushing seem to go hand in hand. It's like a bad Lifetime movie. Look, all we have to do is make the studio dark and I run to the studio. <laughs> Thank you.
Bye, guys. See ya. See you tomorrow. See ya. <laughs> this sounds like a good day. Marilyn. What? This was so good. Oh. This is Marilyn. That. She's queen of all lighting every place. You did a really good job lighting this voice today. Oh, thank you. We had fun. This is such a good... Didn't you guys think that this was a good but contest? Isn't this a beautiful Very set? This is a real... It's like, you all did a great job. The art department did a great job with this. Producers did a great job producing. The singers! I know. They sang! They fabulous? They sang! They were really great. <sighs> anyway. It was a good show. I, Guy Fieri. Yeah. He's a good guy. He's, oh, he's always entertaining. He's, yeah, yes. yeah. He's a good guy, and I like hot topics. Anyway, so we'll do it again tomorrow. I'm going to Asbury. And, and, it was beautifully cut by your director. Uh, oh, yes. yes. Thank, Thank you very you much. Great job. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah. That's De a lot of fun. Deb Miller, everybody. When I say Deb, this is who I'm talking this is about. Me. It was great. It was a really good. It really went The well. girls were good, They too. were fantastic. Have a good shoot. Thanks. Thank you. See you guys tomorrow. Okay. I hear that the, the um, talent is better tomorrow. They won't let me hear who the talent is. Like, like literally, they rehearse with them when they know that I'm gone. I like surprises and, and things like that. I was pleasantly surprised today. Kevin has basketball tryouts three days this week. Monday, which is today. I think it's Wednesday and Friday. And the one today is from like 6 to 7.30 or something. Something, whatever it is. I got all of this paperwork in, which you don't understand. That's a stretch for me and my batty ass. You know, sometimes as a mother, you know, you, 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 you fill out the permission slip, but you forget about the doctor's appointment. Well, you know, during the after show, I made this doctor's appointment about how many different times? And wouldn't you know it fell on what day? The day of Hurricane Sandy. So Kevin has what? Doctor's forms, fortunately, because the doctor faxed everything back over to me. So he's ready, he's in the building. Try out for the seventh and eighth grade boys basketball over there, team. Steve. Over there. All right. This is us? Yes. All right. I love you. Oh, it's hot up. Soupy out here, right? It is, yeah. Okay. So, James, you sit in the front. I'm putting the. Hi there. I'm, <laughs> hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. I love you for watching. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye, Marco. Look, look how Marco comes to the show. Bye, Marco. Bye, buddy. <laughs> um, after, after this. No. I'm no late, late guy. She was such a lady getting into cars. Sorry. Not me. First of all, I forgot all about doing the after show yesterday. I had a meeting right after the show, right after our show. And it wasn't the meeting that was distracting. Oh, I know what it was. Then after the meeting, I had an interview to do in here for a show called Better TV. It, um, it comes on here in New York, but it comes on like 3 o'clock in the morning. Maybe you're familiar. And then after that, and I literally asked the Better TV people, okay, how long is this going to take? Not to be rude, but um, you know, on a schedule. So yesterday after the show, our show, I um, the meeting and the interview, and then I rushed home. I had to go to the gym. I had, I had to go to the gym. And I'm not even obsessed with the gym like that. But, um, you know, the holidays are here, and I really do feel really good about my body and I just got to keep it going doesn't mean lose more weight just you know keep it going so I went to the gym and went to the grocery store ShopRite in New Jersey ShopRite is much less expensive than Kings you, you know Kings I go when I want to get a close space and I just want to run in and run out because the prices are like Whole Foods so therefore there's never like a big crowd in Kings but everything's fresh. So I have to go to shop, right? That's major food shopping. You know, that's where you take your beat around and you don't care. People ding you in the car, you know, the whole bit. And then I had to rush back into the city uh, on time for Joy Behar's Hurricane, Re Hurricane Sandy uh, benefit. So somewhere in the mix, I forgot all about you guys. And I felt so badly. I was so exhausted in the car coming back home. And then I said, oh my God, I didn't do an after show. 
My outfit today was great from the Rachel Roy department. I mean, excuse me, Rachel's coming to the show um, on Thursday. But, but. This is from the, uh, the Angela Dean department. My section of wardrobe, Angela Dean. I love Angela Dean's dresses. And you know what I did? I asked, um, because I, was, I never knew how much, you know, Angela, uh, you know, charges for these dresses. Um, not that you can go out and buy one, because I have no idea where her dresses are available, which makes me upset with her. But she charges us, um, Memsor said, about $275, which is the going rate. As a matter of fact, it's actually an excellent price for, um, for this dress. It's very well made. Very classic. Look, I got another one here. And if it seems like I wear a lot of the same things, it's because how many different ways are you supposed to jazz up a dress or a skirt and a blouse? It is still fairly early. It's just after 12 noon. Uh, this is like the first day in since forever that Kevin doesn't have tutor and he doesn't have basketball practice and I can actually go home and be there and he'll actually be getting off the school bus today. And so, you know, I just have to keep the train moving here at work. Well, let me just make sure everything is twirled up. You know, I'm sitting here with this dress, Memsor, acting like I'm not wearing it for an important occasion. It's all, it's all huh? It's gone. No, he's got to come back. He's just going to steam the dress. Oh, no, I meant to say, like, he went upstairs. He went upstairs to his department. I'm getting ready to take the picture for my Ask Wendy book cover. And I selected purple as the color to wear because purple is a very boss powerful color. It's not pink, which pink is too feminine and girly for some of the answers that I have to give some people about their problems. You know what I mean? A pink is, is the color, when I think of it, I don't think of Ask Wendy, I think of Hug Wendy. And, uh, you know, listen, when you write an ask book, it's not for the faint of heart. If you're going to ask me a question, I'm going to give you what I believe is the proper answer. You know, and sometimes that means you don't need to talk to your mother. There's some women who don't qualify to be mothers. Now, I know this is going to break your heart, but your mother's toxic in your life. Leave her alone. See? A woman with a pink dress couldn't talk like that. <laughs> also, I'm not going with a straight wig. You know why? Because this wig is young. You know, and the kind, of the kind of advice that I'm dispensing in the book is grown advice. There's all, all types of people, maybe you that are watching right now, if you've sent me um, an email or sent me a Facebook blog or doohickey or whatever. Um, I have questions from 18-year-olds and I have questions from 68-year-olds. So, but I just thought that this right here... I don't, I don't want to be edgy girl on the front of the book. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's like an image thing, because it's Ask Wendy, it's the advice book. And I'm wearing my controversy wig. You may, made me rename it, because some of you all can't stand it. Make it bigger, just to make them mad. I, I have want a question. Uh-huh. How do you deal with people who throw stones? <laughs> people with glass mouths shouldn't throw stones. <laughs> <laughs> How long before the wig is ready, Erica Badu? <laughs> uh, I don't know. When, when, when is the year? I thought the shoot was like now. I did too. But nobody's knocked on the door. Okay. It's great having our own studio because Every race. there are there are times. Well, first of all, you know I can't stand having my picture taken, and there are times when we could just use our own studio, take the pictures right here. So comfortable. Looking at that fabulous fur blow in the. Uh, in the air conditioner. This is fake, you know? This is from the store that I told you about. If you're going to go faux fur, you, and, and there's plenty of faux fur uh -huh. out there. Huh? Hi. Hi! I was just talking about you. Hi. Come here and have your Christmas gift or your birthday gift. Hey. Um, hey. Whatever. Oh, this is for me? You shouldn't have. <laughs> those are for, um, those are for, uh, children. Kevin and I have to wrap them here. For me? Yes. Do you remember how oh, much I told you I was going to give you? So that's uh, that's the rest of it. I appreciate that. Thank you. Which equals this amount of money. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Aunt Wendy. <laughs> um, no, we gave away nice gifts to our studio audience for the holidays from Fabulous Furs. And I've been shopping there for years. The faux furs, bar none, are great. Now, I... Um, discovered them through catalog and now you can go online and get them but their stuff sells in Bergdorf's and Neiman Marcus like it's good stuff 
<clears throat> king size bedspreads, little throws, full length faux mink, full length faux sable, little jackets, chubbies, and things like that. So if you're looking, and the prices are competitive, um, you know, hundred dollars here, hundred dollars there. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. But back to the book cover. So that's the look that I'm going for. Purple with the controversy. And I guess I'll wear a nude heel. A nude heel with the purple. Right? That's the right there. Oh. So what? I was just looking for you. Mm -hmm. Um what uh what uh how am I accessorizing? Um this is a gold Wonder Woman cuff. I think we should do that. And I think we should put your favorite earrings on, the Ben Moon. Kind of keep it comfortable. Small at the bottom. But he just, I just spoke to him, he wants you to have something sparkly on, so I told Who's him, the photographer? <laughs> Does he know what sparkle makes my boobs look like? Yeah, out there, so... What, are they going to airbrush them down then? Uh-uh, mm -hmm. I'm not wearing... No, 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 no. Who? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, look, look. Yes. Ask Wendy. No. Ask no. Wendy. Is he out of his mind? No. Who is this photographer? No, he's out there. I think he's shot you before, apparently. He's our friend. Let's ask yeah, Wendy where the party is. Yeah, I have to have a little quick conversation with him. Yeah, but not, then, not at all. Yeah, it's not good for the book cover. I mean, it's cute. That's also from the Angela Dean collection. It's a full-length gown so after you with have a the with him, beautiful after neckline. You know, what next? But that's not where I was thinking of going. Mm -hmm. for my answer. Alex, where are my slippers? Help me. I don't know. Over here. Oh. Thanks, Tristan. Come on. Oh, I'm glad the photographer is a friend of ours. Hey, what did he shoot us for? I think he shot the promo, the promo stuff for here. Oh, the gay guy with the one—he loves Wonder Woman too. Yeah, I've never worked with him before. That was Carl. What's his name? Carl. Carl. Okay. I think. Yeah. He's out there. I love him. I love him. Carl. He loves Wonder Woman. He was a mess. He made the. He made our promotion. Oh, Carl. Hi. I like that lighting setup. How are you? Thank you. Well, welcome to the after show. Hi. You're still together. Yeah, we're still together. And Hi. Yes. Dante, Wendy, Wendy. Yes. You were so young. I totally thought you would have fled the scene by now. <laughs> it's only surgery. It's not really. Look. Here's what I'm thinking, Carl. Yeah. I was thinking of going with a purple sensible girl dress with a bandeau collar so it's not overly sexualized. For the cover. For the cover. And then the back is the sequin with the... Carl shot all the promo pictures for the new season and the, the shoot was quick, quick and fun. fast. It was fun. You and you got to a... sit. You didn't have to be in your heels the whole time. Uh, right. But, no, I did like those clothes And but here's the thing and I'm going to listen to um, to what you said but you know for the back of the book, yeah, I don't mind switching into maybe a different wig and a different dress. But yeah. I, don't, I don't think I want to be glamour girl. No. Well, all right. But I'm, then... I'm dispensing tough advice. Like everything is not easy. That I'm that I'm saying. Sometimes right. it's not as easy as you know break then... up with your boyfriend. You're only 18 years old. All right. So then, but then it doesn't have to be part of the book package. But I just want a glamour moment with a fan on you that you're like yes, because I believe that you have not had that moment of ultimate um, Beyonce fan. You're, like, I just want you to feel like... You just want to have a picture for your collection of no, I already on. have that. You're like this, and we did it on the old set for so, the last season. But you can be sensible, Miss America. You can be like, yes, girls, listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. I'm awesome. But just once, Mimsor has the sequin dress that I love. From, that's like Diane yeah. von Furstenberg. No, who is it? Angela Dean. Oh, get it. Mm -hmm. Ms. Dean. And just to have a moment. That's what they're asking. Who's Dean? Who's Angela Dean? Angela, you really do need to be more accessible. Do you see what I'm saying? But just for, I mean, I feel like I feel like we just did what was expected and nice, but okay. I just want you to have, like, a great moment. But if you don't feel like that woman, we don't have to do it. No, I do feel like I that know, woman. I know, that's what I want to, like, bring out of you that is just for you, for non corporate America, just for you to be like, I am everything. And I just told you to divorce your husband of 25 years because we've had it with his mess. But, right, but that will not be for the book. It's for press shots. It's for something else. It'll be like... Why did you say it? Okay! Oh, press, press shots! Damn! All right. <laughs> Perfect. All right, let me go. Um, 
you're gonna wear controversy for number one, right? Yes, I'm wearing controversy. I love it. And yeah. I do. Because that that's that's the woman that's gonna give sensible like, advice. This is, this this is, is too the young. shortest I can go. Yeah. And then you said, but we can do that for that's not really strong. Okay, but no. we can do but do you have one that we can blow and do? Yeah. Alright. Come here. <laughs> I'm gonna change Carl. Is this good? Oh yes. You are all up in the mix today, aren't you? Just close the door. <laughs> okay. Carl has a diva fan, and Carl wants beauty shots for the press release. Mm -hmm. And I'm not thinking that that's the girl that I'm supposed to be for an Ask Wendy book. I'm thinking that Carl just wants a moment and mm -hmm. wants to build his book, and there's nothing wrong with that because we love Carl. Carl does excellent work. He's a good photo he's a good photographer. He's great. But I, ain't got time for I don't have time for Carl's right? moments. You know I hate photo shoots and I what did I just tell you? Didn't I just tell you that this is the first day in a while that I'm gonna be able to get home and catch the boy when he gets off the bus? Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm. -mm. Mm -mm. So okay. We're gonna give him two looks or one. We're giving him one look. Perfect. It's gonna be this purple dress. Then they're gonna take this purple dress look, and I'm gonna pose in a different way, and they're gonna put it on the back of the book too. On the front, I might be like this. On the back, I might be sitting down like Thinking Girl. I don't know. There's one look, one wig, one hair, um, one makeup moment. Let's go. Now, who's new, gonna tell him that? New shoe. Let me call my manager. <laughs> you know the one I sleep with. You know, I like to make the decisions, but I'm not giving the bad news. I'm the girl next door. <laughs> oh, I can't take it. I can't take it. Listen, guys. Um, um, and believe me, you saw a little bit of what <laughs> he closed it three times on us. You saw a little bit of uh, of. Uh, uh, the behind the scenes of the book but the book itself is going to be really good I've been having the best time writing this book I've written eight chapters already no seven chapters already um, I have no idea how many more but I'm just like when I sit down in the room with the TV off and the house is quiet and I start reading the letters and really thinking about it I love this Ask Wendy book some of you have sent me letters that have made me cry myself and then I go in and answer them. Some of you send me letters that make me so damn pissed that I have to call up my mother or somebody and say, you wouldn't believe this letter I got. So the inside of the book is going to be as interesting as how these pictures are going to turn out. Sequence dress. Miss America. I love you for watching. See you next time. This time it's not you, it's him. Why am I then? I can't stand this dress. It's from one of my favorite cheap and cheerful designers. Oh, I didn't wear slippers out because we just got here five seconds before they said, Dear, here's Wendy. I'm not a velvet girl, that's all. I know velvet is so holiday. Lloyd was wearing velvet. My executive producer, David Perla, today, he's wearing velvet. So many people in the audience had on velvet in all colors, off-white, cranberry. This is navy blue. Are you wearing velvet? Tony's wearing velvet. Is that velvet? I am not a velvet girl, and the velvet with the illusion mesh is just... I know we wear inexpensive dresses on this show. I don't care if Valentino or Gucci makes this dress. It just seems cheap-ish. Maybe because it's short, and I'll take short over illusion mesh and velvet. I like short. Maybe if it was... Long, I, I, I just don't, I don't like the dress. I do. But I, you look very, very pretty. Look who's talking, the fashion police. <laughs> you look She's good. Have to close his eyes or close the curtain. Why? What's this the one that's underneath your arm? Just reach under, Tony. Gosh, I've been naked for goodness sakes. Nita. <laughs> oh, you're about to pull out an implant. <laughs> Pop. Okay, I had the best time today. I have to tell you, uh, Sue Simmons, you'll never really understand, I mean, I tell you, but you'll never really understand uh, 
she was my reason for wanting to go into news, which eventually I chose sides and I decided to stay with radio because the idea of reporting tragedy all the time when my basic personality is, you know, a happy spark. I know reporting the news every day and tragedies like, you know, what happened with the, the massacre and, and bombings around the world, that would take the spark out of my spirited, happy personality. So I decided to go with radio. Um, but Sue, absolutely influential. Uh, and and Penn Jillette. That's what Hot Talk is all about. You know what I mean? Get in there and mix it up. We mix it up with you. This is a place where you say it like you mean it. He was saying it, right, boy? He was pissed. Did you hear at one point he said we shouldn't even be talking about the massacre? Um, Goodbye. Thank you. You know what? That's what I love about you, too. We love each other, but you have opinions. And sometimes they're not very nice, like when you tell me that you don't like my wig. Or you tell me that you didn't like my dress. Or when you say things like that. And what do I do? Wear it shorter, just to make you mad. Keep wearing this wig, just to piss you off. But we agree to disagree, and that's what I love about Hot Talk Panel. And it was really nice to meet Nicole. It was nice to have somebody, a newswoman uh, from the CNN newsroom. Um, and the gifts. This was a good day to be in our audience. The Bissells. Do you know behind the scenes? I apologize to the audience because I sometimes I feel as a woman, if I'm giving, watch out, Tristan, if I give vacuums and and seamers and things like that, that somehow women feel like I'm trying to keep us in the kitchen and cleaning, and that's not it at all. So I felt guilty, and I, Marco, you did a fabulous oh, job. Thank today. you. Uh huh. Um, is Joni behind me? Nope. Thank you, boss. Okay. Enjoy your lunch. Let's go into the wig room. See you I have company in my office. office. Come in here. Huh? We'll go in. We'll go into makeup. Close the door. They're crab cakes, Kevin. He doesn't like crab cakes, so he can go get a sandwich someplace. Okay. I do. Well, I coughed on them. <laughs> You're not sharing. Yeah, no, I'm not sharing. <laughs> I, I literally, I sent one plate back and I kept the whole platter, but I knew I had more show to do, so I coughed on them. Because that's the kind of kind of person I, I can be sometimes. I would do the same thing. Exactly. And I have a fresh bottle of Frank's Red Hot Sauce, which now comes in the thick version, I was telling you. And my niece is coming. And she might be tall and thin and beautiful, but that girl can throw down worse than me. I don't know where all the weight goes. I told her, you're only 22. Warning, warning. If that's so before you know it, with our genes. Um... So everybody in the audience got all the things on Lloyd's table, which I thought was fantastic as well. Uh, I've got to go change into my robe, have my lunch, and prepare for tomorrow's show. As you know, uh, we tape Friday's show on Thursdays. And then we're finished for the week. We don't come back uh, with all new shows until uh, January 7th, but we've handpicked some really great encore presentations. And... Um, That's about it. There's nothing else that I really had to discuss with you. Oh, I know what. Somebody spilled something brown on my carpet, so I've got to grab my new Bissell. No, 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 no. A sponge and some spot shot. I keep the Bissell for home, you know. See, I don't get insulted by things like that. It's just like, like, Throwing sound. At the beginning and the end. Let's see how he dances. Come here. For me? For this song? Yes. You can't dance. Where's your slipper? We already know that. You bite, okay, bite it up. Bite it up. Oh, it's the last day. <laughs> Stupid. Thank you. Love you. Bye.